Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Ron Trombley. How are you today, Ron? Really good, Tracy. How are you? I'm good. We actually received a, a comment on our website today. It said, uh, uh, can you or someone else reading this reply comment briefly and explain the transaction taking place at Levant? So let's start there. Okay. Well, I know it's a little complicated for a lot of people. It's out of the box, but you know, that's how people get rich is by doing deals that are out of the box instead of doing the same thing as everyone else. We determined that the uh, market was not very favorable for mining, uh, mining projects at the moment. And uh, we'd been looking and looking and looking at various mining projects to, you know, expand our company or, you know, look at other opportunities out there. And through all, all of my hard work out on the road, I finally ran into uh, some people that uh, are very exciting and uh, very wealthy and uh, involved in the uh, biotech space. And um, I made a, we made an investment in one of their companies, mining companies, uh, Pershing Gold. And through that investment, afterwards, they said to me, well, they wanted to merge the two originally, but then we decided that we didn't want to do that. So we ended up doing a private placement into Pershing, which is turning out well for us. But um, we uh, then they said, you know, would you be consider thinking about uh, spinning off the mining assets and getting involved in a biotech deal? And I said, you know, I'll take a look at it. Why not? So... Anyways, after many months of looking at various different things, we decided that we liked the Cyvac deal and decided that we could create a lot of shareholder value. And at the time, we were trading at 20 cents roughly, which was about cash value or right around cash value. So obviously, we weren't getting any value for our asset, our mining assets. So we were looking at um, how we can create value for our shareholders. Um, of course, I'm the largest shareholder, was the largest shareholder, I don't know anymore. But um, so obviously, you know, it's in my best interest along with everybody else's best interest to see something happen. So after much work and spending a lot of time and a lot of lawyers, a lot of legal, a lot of research, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, studying and a lot of uh, due diligence, we finally decided through our our board of directors and our special committee to uh, go ahead and do the deal. And um, it was a long involved process, a lot longer than I anticipated. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's going to work out real well for everyone. So we're very excited about it. And we're up and trading now under the two companies. And we're trading at about a 20% premium of what we closed at yesterday. So I think that's a pretty good indication that the market likes what we're doing. And I've certainly had a lot of calls and emails from shareholders that are happy with what we're doing. So we're excited about it. And this is just the beginning. Okay, so this is just the beginning, and we now have two companies. We have Levon Resources and Cy Cyvac Therapeutics Limited. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, they're both trading? Yeah, they're both trading. They're both trading on the TSX. And uh, Cyvac also is trading on the OTCQX. They picked up our OTCQX listing. And we've applied to also trade on the OTCQX. There's usually a 40-day um, waiting period, but we think we can probably speed that up. And uh, we're doing all our filings in the U.S. And I expect both companies, both um, Cyvac and Levon, over the next few months to be probably trading on NASDAQ as well. So we're, you know, we're raising the profile of both companies. This is obviously very exciting for all your shareholders. Uh, with regards to Cyvac, uh, what position are you going to hold, uh, Ron? Because I was looking online, and this is these are some of the little questions that I know the uh, investors out there are curious about. Well, I'm going <laughs> to, since I know nothing about biotech, I'm just going to stay in the background, uh, be a major shareholder, and um, support these guys in any way uh, where they need any help. Um, you know, when it comes to the actual operating of their company, I think they're quite capable of operating it. But we're certainly going to be there in a in a uh, backup position to help them through the transition of the Canadian market and supporting the Canadian market. And um, and we'll be looking at uh, doing other things down the road as well. So, will you uh, uh, maintain the position that you currently have with Levon, or what are you planning on doing with that? Um, I'm going to. Uh, 
keep the position I have in Levon, and we're looking at some other opportunities for Levon. So now I have, um, you know, uh, three other major shareholders uh, being the, um, you know, Opco and uh, uh, their group, um, Dr. Frost, Barry Honig, and Michael Browser, all have substantial positions in the Spinco now, the new Levon. So there's probably between the four of us, we probably own about, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40% of uh, the new Levon shares. So, And then we have a lot of good shareholders that are either own good positions or are also accumulating positions. You can see today we're trading good volume. I think we've traded about $1.2 million today so far in, in new Levon. So we have a good following in new Levon, and we expect to see some exciting things happening down the road there as well. So with the CYVAC, can you tell me, uh, uh, can you tell our audience a little bit more about uh, the CYVAC story? Because, you know, previously this was a private company that has now gone public. Right. They've been planning on going public for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, Dr. Frost and through Opco own about 45% of the company. They've been funding it privately and they felt that it's ready to go public now. They think that the uh, FDA approval will be forthcoming in the next year or two, um, and they have, uh, you know, they're they're going to be um, opening up markets in various other places of the world. So, uh, India, uh, China. Uh, there's a lot of areas where um, there's a big market for for the Cybe vac vaccine, and they also have the um, DNAs which has a wide range of applications. It's been used in um, uh, cystic fibrosis uh, for a long time. And, and outside of cystic fibrosis, they found an awful lot of other potential uh, uh, uses for it. And they think it could be very, very helpful in maybe acquired immune disease and several other very... Um, important diseases that are affecting uh, wide populations. So it's an exciting, uh, uh, it has exciting potential and uh, they're going to be moving forward on exploring that. And they're doing a number of tests uh, in a lot of different areas right now that could be very, very exciting for the company. And they're not just going to be stopping there. I think they'll continue and start to grow the company as well with probably other acquisitions and uh, adding, um, you know, continue to build the, uh, the team. And um, they have some pretty big plans for the company. I know that. Well, I know when you, when you picked it up, it was uh, described uh, with their flagship product being the only commercially available third-generation hepatitis B vaccine in the world. How large is that market in, on a, just, just alone? I expect that's over a billion dollars a year. Um, so... Um, you know, I think it's going to be a, that alone is going to be a, a, a big market. I mean, they've been just pretty much mostly, uh, they, I think they took over about half the market in Israel. Um, it's an Israeli company and I think they took over within two years, about 50% of the vaccine, uh, hepatitis B vaccine market in, uh, in Israel. So, um, we know it's an important, uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, we know that it's far superior to anything else out there. And we think that one of the things that's, that attracted me to the deal was the fact that we believe over time it'll be a takeover candidate by a major pharmaceutical. And as you know, there's a lot of M&A activity in that, in that arena. So, And especially with Dr. Frost at the head of it, uh, you know that uh, he's made some pretty big and exciting moves uh, over the last several years. He sold his last company for $7.6 to Teva Pharmaceuticals and became the uh, chairman of Teva, which is the largest generic drug company in the world. And right now he's building Opco and he just announced a, a large deal with one of the largest testing companies uh, 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 in the United States, consequently the world. And so that's merging with Opco as well. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things going on, and uh, it'll be very helpful for our shareholders and very helpful for Cybac. 
Well, I think uh, a lot of things going on is definitely the understatement of uh, the year here. It sounds like uh, an amazing deal, and we look forward to interviewing Dr. Frost. With regards to Levon Resources, will you be staying on your uh, M&A uh, path uh, in the uh, resource sector, uh, Ron, or what are you planning for Levon? Well, we're going to we're looking at other opportunities. In fact, I'm flying to Miami on uh, Thursday, and um, um, you know we're looking at some other opportunities for uh, with our team there uh, for other uh, opportunities. So um, I'm excited about the potential, and I'm excited about uh, the future for for um, for Levon, New Levon. I think it has. I think it's going to be really, really exciting. I have a big position, and like I said, we have a group of people with big positions in it, and um, you know we want to build this company as well. So I think stay tuned. <laughs> well, you heard it here first at Investor Intel. Ron, thank you so much for joining us today. I am genuinely excited for, uh, for you and all, all the shareholders for both companies. Thank you very much, Tracy. Appreciate it.